For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a resumable multi-file uploader. This is a full stack project, so I'll walk you through how to set up a front end in a minimalistic, efficient way, show you a simple strategy to handle uploads and share with you techniques you can use to allow people to resume uploads anytime, any day. At the end, we should have something simple like this, which allows you to interact with your uploads and monitor their status. Let's get coding. Let's start by creating the index.html file and add a file input field wrapped in a label tag, which will make it easy to style later on. If we try this, we can see I can pick any file, but can only select one. To change that, I'll add the multiple attribute, which then allows me to pick multiple files. But I want to be able to grab only video, so I'll add the accept attribute and say that I want video with any extension. I can also comma separate all the type of videos I want, but any video types works for me. Now I can only select videos. I'll go ahead and hide the input. And because it is inside a label, they get implicitly bound together. So clicking on the label will trigger the same action on the field, which is to let me select the file. I'll give it the ID of upload button and proceed to create the JavaScript file to write our uploader logic. Here I'll select it by ID and attach a change event listener to it where I'll simply log the event for now. When I select the file, we see the event in the console and I want you to pay attention closely now. There is not much in here I am interested, but the target, which contains the input element. Inside of it, we shall find the files list with all selected files, which will contain information like the name and size of the file. If we expand the file proto object, we see that the file object extends the blob object, which contains the array buffer and the slice method we will use later. Very important details not to miss. The slice allows us to slice the array buffer and create file chunks we can use to upload parts of the file. I'll simply log the target files now and note that the files list is not an array, but a list. So it does not contain array matters like for each map, reduce, etc. After when you select a file, sometimes the browser does not let you pick more. So if that happens, all you gotta do is set the input value to null or an empty string but I'll leave it out for this video. Now I'll create an upload files module using the self invoke function that simply returns a function that will be stored in the upload files variable. This function takes the file list and an optional option object, which I'll set it to be the default options here containing just the URL for now. From the change event callback, I'll call it passing the file list. And because this is a closure, I'll create an upload file function expression that takes a single file and options. From the return function, I'll first spread the files to turn it into an array and call the for each, where for each file, I'll call the upload file, passing the options as well, making sure I override any options missing properties with the default option properties. I'll start by creating the XML HTTP request, then I need to open it. And the first info it takes is the type of request we're making, and we'll be doing a post. And the second parameter is the URL. Then the third optional parameter is if it is to be asynchronous or not. I recommend always async, especially for uploads. Then we just send it, but we need to specify the file. So I'll instantiate a form data which I then call append and it takes a few arguments where the first one is the name to identify the data. Think about it like the key in an object. Then we set the thing that we are passing, which in this case is the file. And then the third optional parameter, which is the name of the file. And we just pass it to the send method call. If we try this on the browser, we see that it gets an error. And this is because we are sending the request to the current URL, which does not handle post requests. If we check the body of the request, we see the file as the key and the value as the binary as we send the file as blob. On the request header, we see that it automatically set the content type to be the multi-part form data and also automatically set the content length in bytes. We can also listen to different events on the request and you should add it after you open the request. We can listen to an onload event, which is triggered when the upload finished successfully. 
By the way, you can also listen to event by using the add event listener method. In this case, it would be load, but I'll use the assignment for this video. There is also an onload start for when the request is sent, onload end, which is triggered when the request is finished, whether successfully or not. There is an on error for errors, on timeout, which is a specific error type, and the on progress, which we need. Let me not forget on abort, which happens when you stop the request, which we will use to detect when we pause the upload. I'm not gonna use the onload start and end for this. Feel free to do otherwise. The request has an upload object, which is better to listen to on progress events since we are doing a file upload. I'll go ahead and set default event listeners options for each. Note that I consider timeout and error to be the same for this example. Now I'll create another module to handle UI side of things and I'll call it upload and track files. It will also return a function that takes a list of files. Now here in the listener, instead of calling upload files, I'll just call upload and track files and call upload files from the upload and track files return function. I'll create my listeners and pass them as options for the upload files. These only log things for now. If I try to upload, we see the logs and the error here is also a progress event. The only things I'll need from these events are the loaded and total property values where loaded is the amount of bytes uploaded so far and total is the total size in bytes of the thing being uploaded. It can be the whole file or a specific chunk. Now to get rid of this error, I need to create a server to handle this upload. So I'll initialize npm with npm init and just use the provided defaults. Then I'll install the express module to use to create the server. We see we get package.json file and express listed independencies. I'll then create the server.js file and inside I'll import express. Use it to create the app and then listen on port 1234. Now run server with node from terminal and in the browser we see blank, but it's working. I'll add a get request handler for any path, passing in a callback that is called with request and response. I will simply respond it with it works and rerun the server to grab the changes. If we check the browser again, we shall see the message now. To avoid having to rerun the server on every change I do, I'll install nodemon, which can do that for me. In the package.json scripts, I'll add a start script that simply runs server.js with nodemon instead. Now I'll just npm start from terminal and the server is ran in watch mode and rerun on every changes I make. To handle upload, I'll add another path request handler and it will be for upload path, which will be a post request. And for now, all I do is respond with 200, meaning I got your upload request, but I'm not handling the file for now. I'll come back to it in a minute. Now from the client, I'll update URL to localhost1234 slash upload. If I try to upload now, I get course error since they are both on different URL, different origin, and this is a cross origin error. To solve that, I'll install a package called course, import it, and use it as express middleware. If we try to upload again, we get two progress events and a complete which logs done. With that, now let's add some UI to this. And the first thing I do is create a diff of class upload progress tracker. And give it a simple title and a container where I'll add the individual file progress indicators. When this upload tracker is called to initialize the upload, I'll simply append it to the body of the document. Because we will have many files and a single listener type for all of them, 
I need a way to track individual ones. So I'll create a map. And the reason I use map here is because the key can be anything. And I want to keep tracking data by file objects. So when I dispatch these request events, I'll simply pass the file as the second argument along with the event. So for each file uploaded, I'll call set file element, which is a function that takes the file and create the div element, which will contain a file details block where I put the name of the file and current status. I'll also add a progress bar with width of zero for now. Then I'll append the file element to the body of progress box file progress wrapper. If I try to upload now, we see all the files elements on the DOM. For the files map, I'll set a new entry where file is the key and the value is an object containing the status, size and percentage. To better track the status, I'll create a file status object with all the status I'll need for this. then initializing the file status to pending to start. Now for when the event comes along, I'll use the file from the event and get the tracking object from the map and update the status. So for progress, I'll set status to uploading and use the event loaded and total bytes uploaded to calculate the percentage, then set it. For error, I'll set status failed and percentage 100% so we can see the red progress bar. For abort status, paused, and for complete status, completed, and bar 100% as well. If I try this, nothing will get updated for now because although we are updating the object, we are not updating the DOM. So I'll create a function to update file element, but before I'll set the file element in the tracker object as well. And I'll call this update file element after every change with the file object. Inside, I'll access the file element and destruct its children. We see it has a single direct child, which is the file details. So the first element in the children list will be the file details. But I'll further destruct the file details and access its children, which are two, the paragraph tag and the progress bar. Then again, further destruct the paragraph tag and access its children, which will be the file name and file status span tags but I won't need the file name, so I'll just omit it for this. Note that the browser will neglect painting the DOM when multiple of similar changes made. To force the browser to update the DOM, I'll wrap this in the request animation frame, which will execute the code and paint the view soon after, so we can get the progress bar and the file status updates. Inside, I'll simply update the file status with the file object status and include that status in the class as well. Then I'll update the progress bar with, with the file object percentage, which I'll then set an height of two pixels and green background. If we try this in the browser, we see the file uploaded and very fast, the status changed to complete and the bar is full and green. To actually see this in action, I'll throttle the network to fast 3G and upload again to see the bars filling as it uploads. Now, I want to be able to pause the upload, pretty much abort the request. First, I'll add another block for the file element for the file actions, where I'll add a pause button. And to be able to pause the right request in the upload files module, I'll have to track the request as well. So I'll create a weak map for this. Weak map keys can only be objects and items can be garbage collected when they are no longer in use. Check my map versus weak map comparison video for further details. Now, before I send the request, I'll set an entry using the file as key and an object containing the request and the options for the request. Now, I'll create an abort file upload function expression that takes the file, find its file request, and if there, 
it accesses the request and calls the abort method, which will then cancel the request mid-flight. Now, what I do to expose this is simply return the object containing the abort function reference. I'll also create a clear file request function that simply reads off the request object from the file request map and expose the function as well. Now down here where I call upload files, I know now that it returns an object, so I'll call it uploader. Note that no matter how many times I call upload files, it will return an object containing the same function references that do the same things, which highlights the beauty of this, which is we are using the same functions to track different files instead of creating dedicated functions or methods for every file. We are also using the file as the exchanging token here to ensure tracking the right thing. On set element, I'll destruct the file element, file actions, where the buttons will be, grabbing the pause button to then attach a click event on it which will call the abort file upload on the uploader object. To show you this on the browser, I'll first throttle the network and upload a file which we can see is uploading its chunks and the status is pending and when I click the pause button, it turns red and the status of it is now cancelled. The way the upload works is the browser establishes a connection with the server and once successful, it sends little byte chunks to the server and that will trigger a progress event which will contain the size of the chunks successfully transferred. Once all the chunks are sent, it then closes the connection fulfilling the request. The thing is, when we cancel, it could be that the server successfully received the chunk but we never get the progress event with the chunk uploaded. So it's hard to get the information right about the uploaded chunk size in the client in order to resume the upload successfully. For resume, we need to ask the server about the total size of all the chunks it successfully collected. So we can slice the file and send only the part that is missing and let the server stitch the parts together. Another issue is, what if my connection broke and the file is huge and I already waited 3 hours and want to resume the final 15 minutes another day or time? We need to be able to tell the server which file we want to resume the upload and the server needs to know what parts of what files I am sending. One thing we can do is before we start an upload, we tell the server first like, hey, I have these few files to upload. Then the server responds with an ID for each file that we can pass along with the file when we are uploading. The good thing is the server can store these IDs with the user data in the database, so in case user loses internet connection mid-upload. Next time they log in, this information are sent with the user and can use it to display on the browser, hey, you have these uploads to resume. Then they can do it when they want and have a much more reliable connection. And when we are trying to resume an upload for a specific ID, we need to ask the server what it got so far and the server will respond with the file size it currently has. Then we slice our file in the front end and send it the missing part. To do that, I'll create two request handlers, one for upload status and another for upload requests. For the upload request, I'll be expecting the file name and the body, so if those are not available, I'll send a 400 response for bad requests and missing file name as the message. I recently shared an article with many JavaScript code solution and one of them is for unique alphanumeric ID generator, which is simple enough for this, but you are free to use something else like UUID. This is where you would probably save the file data to the database, but I'm not gonna bother with that. I'll use the file as my database for this, so I'll simply create a zero byte file using create write stream but I'll create a function that given a file name and ID will return a path to the file and I'll store it in the uploads folder. And for the file name, I'll first identify what it is and for this case it's going to be file, then dash file ID, dash file name. I'll use it to get the path for the file and pass it to the write stream which I then set the flag W for write. Finally, I'll respond with status 200 and the file ID and name in the response body. I'll now create the uploads folder and continue on the client where I'll first move the upload file content to new function called upload file chunks. In the upload file now, I'll use a fetch to make the request to the upload request endpoint passing the option object. 
which the method is post and set some headers. And for this, I'm sending a JSON body. So I'll set content type to application JSON. And the body content will be a stringify object containing the file name. On the server, to be able to handle JSON body requests, I'll need another middleware available in Express called JSON, which is a body parser. Then the fetch returns the result, which I call to get the JSON format instead. Then I'll cache that response and call upload file chunks with a file. And in the options, I'll set the file ID. I'll actually set the file request tracker from here instead. In the upload file chunks, I'll also set the file ID in the form data. Then I'll set the request in the tracker object. My preferred way to send file ID would be using the header to mimic traditional token exchange, like the bearer token, for example. So I'll create a next header and I'll call it file ID, which I'll send a file ID. I can also set the content length header, but normally browser will scream at me because this is set automatically. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Most importantly, we need to provide information about the chunk we are sending. So I'll use the content range header in a very common format. But first, I'll get my chunk by slicing my file using the option starting byte. And name it chunk instead of file in the form data. Now for the content range, I'll send a string with bytes equals starting byte. Dash ending bytes, which is starting bytes plus the chunk size forward slash the file size. And this is how we communicate with the server about what we are sending so we can evaluate and do the right thing. If we try this in the browser, seems like I have an error and seems like I use the FS module instead of response to send a response. Now, when I upload, we see two requests, one for the file request, which returns a file ID and file name in the response body. And the upload now sends the file as chunk. And in the upload folder, we see the files created. They are zero bytes for now. In order to resume the file, we need to first handle the file upload. And for that, I'll install another package called busboy to handle multi-part request body. There are many other modules like Multer that is commonly used to handle multi-part uploads. Actually, Multer use busboy under the hood. I prefer busboy or multi-party NPM modules, which give me fine control over the upload. I'll leave the links for all of these packages in the description. Now in the upload, I'll first extract the content range and file ID from the request header. Express makes all headers lowercase. So be careful when you're trying to find your header in the uh, request headers. And if there are no content range or file ID, I'll respond with 400 for bad requests and a message to let the client know what's up. Then I'll use regular expression to extract individual parts from the content range and assert the content range correct format as well. It is bytes equal and I'll open close parenthesis to grab and I'm looking for digits of any size, then dash same thing again and four slash that I have to escape and grab the last digits part. If there is no match, I'll respond with bad requests for content range format. Otherwise, I'll grab these parts. Match will give me an array where the first part is the entire string and the second onwards are the individual parts. So index one will be the range start, index two will be range end, and index three will be the file size. And I'll turn these numeric strings into number as well. Now, I'll do a couple checks to make sure the numbers are right before I start working with them. So first I make sure that if the range start is greater or equal to the range end or file size, or if range end is greater than the file size, I respond with 400 as well. These checks is just to make sure I'm not resuming a file using another with the same name. You can further avoid this by using more details of the file when you do a file upload request on top of the file name, like using the creation date or whatever information in the file. Now I import busboy initialize it passing the request header so it can read the content type then i'll pipe the request to busboy since the request is a streamable i spoke about this in a recent node.js article i'll leave the link below for you to check later then i'll listen to a few events on busboy first the error which inside i'll just log the error and respond with clean 500 
The next event is finished for when it's done reading the chunk and here I respond with 200 for success. The final event is file for when busboy is finished parsing the request and it provides me with a few things but the second argument here is file, third is file name and that's all I need. With the file name and ID I'll get the file path. But first, I need to check if the range start matches the file size. And I'll use the fs stat method, but first, I'll promiseify it using the utils promiseify function. And I'll call this promiseify stats get file details. I'll call it with the file path so it provides more information of the files. If there was an error reading the file, I'm going to assume the file does not exist and send a bad request for chunk details. Now, if the stat size, AKA the file size is different from the starting byte, I don't need to continue because the chunk range start must be zero to indicate that it is starting an upload or some bytes match the file current size. So we know we are resuming the file upload. Again, bad requests. And finally, I'll pipe the file into a write stream using FS create write stream, passing in the file path. And the flag I am going to use this time is A for append because we are pending to the file. Now, if we try this on the browser, we see the file uploading and we check the upload folder, we see the file. Before we do the resuming part, we need to get the current file status. So I'll change this upload status to be a get type instead. And here we will be checking for the query and not the body of the request. And it should contain the file name and the file ID we want the status of. If those are missing, 400 response again. Otherwise, I use the get file details to read the file and respond with 200 and a JSON body containing the total chunk size. On the client, I'll create a resume file upload function that will take a file and make a get request using fetch. And I'll add a query in the URL endpoint for file name and file ID. Similarly, we get the response, turn into a JSON, then I'll just log the response for now. I'll go ahead and add a resume button to the file actions in the file element. And on click, I'll call resume file upload with the file. If we try this on the browser, I upload, then pause upload and clear the requests. Then when I click resume, we see the status request and indeed is sent the body with the total chunk size. And we see that in the console as well. To resume the upload, I'll just call upload file chunks and set the starting byte. And it seems I have a typo here for starting type. Sorry about that. For accurate progress percentage, we need to take in consideration the starting byte into the size. So the loaded will be the loaded bytes plus the starting byte. And the total here needs to be the file size and not the chunk size. And when we upload, we get the content length error, like I mentioned moments ago. This is because the browser sets the content length and we don't need to do it. So I'll just remove it. And with that, the upload functionality is pretty much complete. So let's focus on improving the look and interactability of this uploader tracker. I'll start by adding the retry and clear buttons in the file progress file actions and attach click events to them. We don't have a retry function yet, so I'll add that. And again, it takes a file and all it does is call the upload file chunks. For the clear click, I want to do some extra stuff. So I'll delete the file from the file list. Also remove the element from the DOM. Now in the update file element function, I want to toggle when these buttons show according to the status. For pause, I want to show it when the upload is in progress. For clear, I'll show it when, when uploading is paused. For resume, when paused. And for retry, when failed. Let's start styling this and I'll first get a normalizer for my CSS.
Create the normalize and upload a CSS file and link them in the head. I have here a simple style for the body and the button. I'm going to paste some code for the upload progress tracker, which will be fixed 400 pixels wide box with some transitions for the background. Since I'll be animating the linear grading as the progress bar fills up and it's a smooth purple and green color mix. Now I'll make the file and the progress bar color according to the status as well. If complete, it'll be green. If there was an error, it will be red, otherwise a dark gray. We can check to see how things look so far. And it seems I gave the file progress the same class as the container. So I'll rename it to file progress instead. I'll paste now the style for the file progress where I display flex and vertically align as children. The details should take as much available space with flex one. The paragraph text is subtle with fixed height and vertically aligned children. For the file name, I added ellipses in case the file name is too long. Float it left and make it take max available space of 70%. The issue here is that when we have the ellipses, we don't see the file extension and I want that information always visible. So in the file setup function, I'll add another span tag in the P tag for the file extension. And I'll first get the index of the dot for the file extension. And I'll just substring it from the file name. And I'll also swap status to come before the name. The file extension style is a simple margin to top four pixels. And for the style, it is going to be 20 by 20 box. And I text indent the text with overflow hidden. So the text does not show because I'll put an icon there instead. I'll float it left by default. But if the current stat is uploading, I'll position an absolute on top right because I want to display the percentage of the file in progress. That's why the file name details only takes up to 70% of the available space. So if the file status is complete, the content of the status is the file status. Otherwise, it is the percentage of the upload and I'll math around it to get rid of the decimal points. Now, if we try this, we should see the progress bar of the file and the percentage for the file upload. I'm going to paste few icons I collected for this and for different file status, I'll have a different icon. Now a simple style for the individual button and I'll add icons for them too. That's why I'm adding the padding top of 36 pixels. So the text stays on the bottom and the icon on top. I also made the text smaller as well and centered. These are the icons for the buttons and we can try them. Seems like the pause button has the wrong class, I guess. So I'll fix that, but the progress bar is off now. I need to add position relative to the file progress itself. And the status is showing in the file name instead. And this is because I swapped the name and the status element when I destruct them from the progress element. I also want to display more information on the overall box and be able to hide these individual file progress. So I'll create an update progress box function for that, which I'll call when I update the file and after I clear the element. First, I'll grab the total number of files currently being tracked and I need to handle whether there are files to display or not because you can clear all the files individually. I start by saying how many files are being uploaded, then an upload progress for percentage and other details. And right after an overall progress bar, I'll also include an expand button, which I'll call maximize that will toggle show the files. Now 
we will need to track many things here like the total uploaded and uploading files total failed and pause files the total chunk uploaded and, and total chunk uploading as well then i'll go over the file objects and if failed i'll increment total failed files increment total upload files and uploading files then i'll increment the chunk size of the files And I'll also increment the pause files if file is paused. Then I'll use the chunk size to calculate the percentages of the file currently in progress, completed, or paused. Now I'll destruct the parts of the progress box and update them starting from the title. So if percentage is 100, I'll say uploaded and use the uploaded files track otherwise saying uploading and use total uploading files of total files. For the upload progress, I'll add three span tags with total uploaded, failed, and paused files respectively. Then I'll use the percentage for the progress bar width and background size for that gradient as well. I'll also add a percentage on the upload progress as well. For the style, simple H3 basic styling for font and color, and the progress bar is a nice bluish gray background. And the span tags for the progress bar are 30 pixels width and a padding right where I'll put the icons for individual ones. These icons are positioned on the right where the padding is. The maximize button is a 20 by 20 button positioned absolute top right and also it takes in and detects a way to show the icon instead. The progress bar is a position absolute blue gray background with transition on the width and opacity since we will hide it when the box is expanded. We can see the progress so far couple adjustments but it is coming together now if there are no files in the list i'll change the title to say no upload in progress and hide everything else if the user uploads something i'll show them as well now when the expand button is clicked i'll toggle the class expanded on the progress box and the button itself If we try this, we can see it in action. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications for more awesome projects I'll be sharing with you. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like and grab the code for this implementation in the description. Don't forget to check the links with references of things I mentioned throughout this video. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.